Hi, this is Kyle Lee, Senior Construction Solutions Specialist with ATG USA, and we're back for another technical talk video in our series providing a high-level overview of the different tool sets available inside of the Autodesk Build module. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the assets area within Autodesk Build. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and log into the ACC website and select the appropriate build project that you should be working in. Then we're going to start off by selecting our Assets tab here on the left. When we come into Assets, <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to establish different categories for our assets before we can even begin to create assets. In order to uh, establish our different categories, we'll come over here to the Settings button, and as you can see, we have different areas for categories, areas where we can build in custom fields, as well as status sets, and also the ability to manage permissions for the users within build assets. So as you can see here, we've already created a couple of categories for electrical, mechanical, plumbing equipment. I've also in included a category for pumps and room status. The first thing that we would need to do after we've gotten our, stat our categories created here is then we can come in and we can create our asset. In order to create our asset, we have to give the asset a name. Then we would stipulate the category for that asset. And then once we put in the category, it will give us the ability to select a status for that particular category. We can also designate an ar the area or location of this particular asset. And we have the ability to enter in a brief description of the asset. We also have the ability to enter in a barcode that can be scanned with our mobile device out in the field for adding additional information to that particular asset. So once we've entered in all the information for the asset, we can hit create, and then we'll start to see our assets begin to populate here within the asset area, the individual asset area. Now, I mentioned custom fields a moment ago, and we can, in fact, manipulate our custom fields from here within the settings. And then we would have the ability to also, through our settings bar over here, determine which of these custom fields we want to have displayed here on the asset list. So in the asset list, we can see the name of the asset. We can also see the category in which it falls under, current status for each asset, as well as a description. You see the location. We can see any barcode information if we have that, and we can also see the date in which that asset was created on. Now we can also see some of the other custom fields that I've entered in, like is this a lead uh, compliant component? What is the serial number that we can enter as the um, asset is being um, installed or possibly during startup and testing? We can also enter in information about the purchase order in which the um, the piece of equipment or the asset was, was ordered on, the installation date, and who it was that installed that particular asset. Now, what we can do from within the asset here is once we've got our assets created, we can come in and we can see the asset details. We can see the name of the asset. We can see a description of the asset. We can also see our, our status of the asset. And we have the ability to update and change the asset status as necessary and as we move through the course of the project. We can also see the category in which this asset falls under and the location, as well as the barcode information if we have that. We can see any references if we're referencing in any files, um, any forms, issues, photos, sheets, or submittals. And we can also see the activity log associated with each individual asset. So I'm back here on the details tab and for this particular asset, it was in a status of ordered. Well, that asset has in fact been delivered and is now on the job site. So we're going to update the status for this particular asset to show it as delivered. We can do the same for our other assets. So in the case of this particular air handling unit, um, we had the status set as specified, but we know at this point that it has been ordered. If it had been ordered, we could also update the information regarding the um, purchase order number as well. We can go through that and, and do that for all of our other um, 
different assets that we have on the project and we have the ability to continue to manage those statuses. If we need to, um, to filter, we do have the ability to filter our assets and we can filter based on the status of the asset, the location of the asset, or possibly even on custom fields that have been built in for the assets themselves. So once we've filtered down our, our assets, possibly to look at just the ones that are, let's say maybe ordered, then we could potentially export these out if we need to as well. So that was just a high level overview of the assets area within the Autodesk Build module. I certainly appreciate you joining me for today's video and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks for your time.